What is that? Are you overheating? I, I think so. I think so. Everybody, welcome back to our channel. As you can tell by the title, in today's video, I will be sharing with you some tips on how to do Disneyland with a toddler. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up if you end up enjoying this video and hit that bell notification just to get notified every time we post a new video. No. So we recently took Evan to Disneyland and it was probably one of the best experiences I had at Disneyland just because I took my little one and it's, it was just so magical. Did you like Disneyland? Yeah, did you see Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Yeah, did you see Pluto? Yeah. Did you see Goofy? Yeah. Did you see Lightning McQueen? Yeah. Which one was your favorite? Um, Mater. Which one? And Mater. Mater? Yeah. Oh, you like seeing Mater? Yeah. 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 So I hope you enjoy and let's get to tip number one. So tip number one is to take a lunch pail full of snacks and your lunch to save some money. So Disneyland does allow you to bring in a six pack lunch pail. So what we did is we went to Costco and we bought some ready to go salads as well as a box of Uncrustables. So that was going to be our lunch while we were in the park. We also went to Target and stocked up on a bunch of snacks just so we weren't um, like craving anything and if we did want to buy something and we weren't like crazy buying snacks at Disneyland because if you know Disneyland everything is expensive so if you can bring your own lunch and snacks then you'll you'll really save some money in there so tip number two is to plan out what rides you really want to get on and the rides that you really don't care for and if you miss out then it's not a big deal so our plan was, since it was just me, Eric, and Evan, we weren't going to be able to get on any of the adult rides. So like Star Wars or the Matterhorn or the Splash Mountain, like those big rides. So then we just looked at our map and saw which rides were for kids. And we looked at the height requirements just to make sure that Evan was going to be allowed to be in there instead of having to you know, walk to the ride and then seeing the height requirement and being like, oh, he can't get in. So we already knew ahead of time which rides he was allowed in. So then from those rides, we kind of looked into what the ride was about and we decided if it was going to be too scary or if Evan wasn't going to like it. And then we kind of said, well, do we want to go on this ride or do we want to just save some time and go on different stuff? So if you already know that your kid's not going to like any anything scary or dark or like loud noises, I would take that into consideration because you don't want to wait like 5,000 hours for a ride that you know your kid's not gonna wanna be on. So yeah, that's tip number dos. So tip number three is to start from the back and work your way up. He just woke up from his nap, so he's gonna be popping in and out, so just ignore him. <laughs> I don't know what video I saw this from, but it was a Disneyland Tips and Tricks. And they suggested to go, <laughs> to go, once you walked into the park, to go all the way back to the back of Disneyland, which is Toontown, and kind of walk your way forward. So that's what we did. So on our way back there, we saw uh, the Dumbo ride, which I am a huge fan of Dumbo. That's one of my favorite movies. And the line didn't seem that long. So, like I said in the previous uh, tip, is if there's a certain ride you want to get on, make sure you get on at the right time. So that was the right time. Because we only waited maybe like 15 minutes, which is such a great wait time for the Dumbo ride. So we did that, and then we walked all the way to Toontown. And right next to Toontown is It's a Small World. It's a Small World ride is the most popular ride in Disneyland probably besides Splash Mountain I think so since everybody was in the front and we were one of the ones in the back the wait time for it's a small world was five minutes you heard that right five minutes we pretty much just walked through the line and then we just got on one of the boats and we rode the ride we didn't have to wait like an hour to get on it which was amazing. 
So if you're gonna take any tip away from this video is this tip here. When you walk into the park, go all the way to the back because I promise you it'll be so worth it. So after we rode on It's a Small World, we walked into Toontown and there wasn't any rides that we were gonna get on Toontown, so we were just mainly there to go to... No. No? So like I was saying, there wasn't any rides in Toontown that we cared to ride, so we just went straight to Minnie and Mickey's house. And when we walked into Toontown, I swear it looked like they had closed that little town out because there was hardly anybody there. So when we went into Minnie's house, we probably waited like 15-20 minutes, which is such a great time to wait for Minnie because she's one of the main characters and everybody's there to meet her. And then after that, we went to Mickey's house, which is right next door, and that in itself was I think 20, I think it was like 20-25 minutes, which is again a great time to wait for Mickey. And so we met Mickey and we left. So we waited 40 minutes for two characters that are like the top of the line because we did the whole back to front. If we would have done the front to back, I'm pretty sure by the time we reached the back, it was probably gonna be like an hour wait. So yeah. Great tip guys, great tip. So tip number four is to download the Disney app before you get into the park. Just so you have it before you walk in. So what's cool about having the Disney app is that it has everything you need to know about Disneyland and California Adventure. It has the map to both parks, it lets you know where the bathrooms are, it lets you know where the restaurants are and like their, um, their menu of each restaurant. It lets you know when the shows are, it lets you know where the characters are. It's just such a cool app. You can also access all your pictures that they take at Disneyland from the app and purchase them on the app. So it's just, it has everything on it. So we used it, like I said, I think it was one of the other tips to plan out the rides. That's what we use because it tells you like the wait times for the rides. And so from there you can kind of like pinpoint where you should go next. So yeah, I highly, highly recommend you download the app. Tip number five is if you can, do a two day hopper for a great experience. So we went to Disneyland for two days and we had the hopper pass on both days. On the first day, we just fully um, fully did Disneyland. We just stayed the whole day there, did everything, did the parades, watched the shows, fireworks, um, everything. Everything we tried to do at Disneyland that we wanted to do. So then on day two, we were gonna do California Adventure. But since we knew that California Adventure was more towards um, like older kids and adults, we knew that we were gonna end up having to hop back to Disneyland um, mid through the day. So we did California Adventure and then we hopped back to Disneyland after we were done. So by doing everything on day one at Disneyland, it saved us so much time because while everybody was watching the parades, we were able to go on some of the rides and not have to wait that long. So by downloading the Disneyland app, we were allowed to see how long the wait was for one of the rides that we really wanted to go on. So that ride was, I think it's called Autotopia, I believe. And the previous day, Autotopia was packed. Like, it was probably more than an hour wait. So when we saw on the app that it was like, five ten minutes of a wait because everybody was gonna be at the parade we ran we ran to Autotopia and it was like a five minute wait we just walked the line and we were in a car then after the Autotopia we saw the Buzz Lightyear ride and we were like hey let's just let's just see how long the wait is so it was a pretty decent amount of wait but they had fast passes so I told Eric, like, let's just get a fast pass and we'll just have to walk around for an hour and then when we come back, we don't have to wait that long. So that's what we did. We got a fast pass to the bus light here uh, ride and we only waited like five, 10 minutes to get into the ride when it was our time. So by having the two day hopper pass, it allows you to um, 
enjoy the parks more just because on one day you can just fully jam pack it with everything you want to see like just because the shows and the parades like those are like main things you want to experience and so then the next day you can kind of hop back and forth and experience both parks if you'd like so tip number six I believe is if you have a toddler with you and it's just you your significant other and a toddler don't get the max pass don't get the max pass so with the max pass it's like this new feature that you can do like fast passes on your phone but with if you have a toddler and it's only you and your toddler the toddler rides don't have fast passes so then the max pass doesn't really go towards it so you kind of spend money on something that you're not going to use but if you are going with like a family and you have somebody to watch your kid while you're on the rides, fast pass is a good thing to get. And the last tip I have is to use their nursery and breastfeeding room. So if you didn't know, both Disneyland and California Adventure have a nursery room with AC. So when it's hot, you can go in there and it's so nice in there. You can breastfeed, you can bottle feed, you can high chair feed, or you can sit there um, while your little one naps. So that's what we did. Um, on our second day, we didn't want to leave for a break and then come back. So Evan ended up taking a nap while we were at California Adventure. So we walked over to Disneyland and went into their nursery area and we just stayed there until he woke up. So if you don't know where the nursery area is, it's, um, so you walk down Main Street and once all the Main Street stores end, if you look to, I believe, your right, there's going to be like a hot dog. There's going to be a hot dog stand and it's like right next to that hot dog stand. But I didn't know about it. So thankfully, um, one of Eric's managers told him and we went in there just because it was so hot outside and Evan was snapping so he was like drenched so we went in there and they let us stay in there up until he needed he woke up so it was such a great it was such a great thing to do so I would take full advantage of it so I forgot to mention this very important tip but the bonus tip we'll call it is to get either one of those harness backpacks or these bracelet things for your toddler. Just because they can wander around everywhere and you really don't wanna lose them. So what we ordered are these bracelet, um, well, I don't know what they're called. They're just bracelet things. So I, so I get on one end and tie it to myself and then the other end is for the little one. And it's a double strap. So once you put it in, so once you put your their little arm in, you do one strap and then you do another, just so it's secure and they don't like try to get out of it. They were such a huge help for us, just because Evan had some room to kind of like wander on his own, but he was still close enough to us where we can like you know make him our way. But yeah, you can find these on Amazon. They come as a pack. Uh, the blue one is a little longer of a distance and the orange one is a shorter distance. And I'll go ahead and link it down in the description box if you're interested, but I highly recommend these. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed all my tips on how to do Disneyland with a toddler and I hope they help you on your next trip to Disneyland. Thank you guys for watching.